how very English. Red phone box, beautiful stream. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Here's something which isn't quite so beautiful, but it's still very, very mean. This is the Kawasaki ZH2. Now, massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles. Links below for lending me this for a week. This is their demo bike. So if you want to book a test ride on this, give them a ring. But for today, I'm going to take this out. I've done a first ride of you on this bike already. Link above. But today, we're just going to go through and talk to you about this machine. See how I found it, riding it for the last week. Okay, roll the intro, Tropsy. Let's get into it. Oh dear, so as I say, I've been riding this round for the last week or so. I've actually got the Super Duke at home at the same time I've had this, so I've been riding both this and the Super Duke. Now, I will do a separate comparison video between this and the Super Duke at some point, so you will see that shortly, but uh, this, this is a bike which is very, very different to the Super Duke. Have I scratched the tank there? What's going on here? What scratches? You want me, Governor, honestly. Oh, beautiful day. Beautiful bike. Well, sorry. This bike, let's get it out. Let's get the big thing out of the way first. Let's get the big thing out of the way first. This bike splits opinion with its looks. I'm, when I first saw the pictures of this, I was pleased. I was happy. I've got a H2 and I was worried that I might want to upgrade it and buy one of these instead. A bit more comfortable version of the sports bike, I thought. But when I saw the photos, I was quite pleased that I wouldn't have to worry about having to sell my bike and getting one of these because, you know, let's be honest here, this isn't the most beautiful of bikes. I mean, the looks are subjective with any bike. This is not, I wouldn't say, one of the best looking machines. When I put some pictures up on Instagram, people have said, you know, the whole uh, styling team should be taken outside and shot along with their family and their children. <laughs> so th this type of thing can't be passed on to future generations. Now, I think that could be a little bit harsh, but it does divide opinion. But when you see it in the flesh, it's like a lot of these bikes. When you actually see one in the flesh, it actually looks a lot better than it does in pictures. And I think this black, this matte, it does look much better, but I agree, it's not the best looking naked that's out there at the moment. But looks aside, what's it like as a motorcycle? This is a heavy bike. This is a 235 kilo motorcycle. That's wet, that's not dry, thankfully, that's wet. This has got the H2 engine in it. The H2 itself, it's not a particularly light motorcycle. It's a it's a heavy sports bike. Now, this bike's got a, a supercharger on it. It's got all the the gears and everything, all of the all of the chains to drive the supercharger. It's got an uprated gearbox to cope with all that power. It's got a, a, an aluminium plenum. There's no sort of airbox. It's an aluminium plenum, for obviously for all that hot charge to be contained within. So that the very nature of having a supercharged bike is obviously going to add some weight to the overall design so it's not a featherweight it's 235 kilos but what that supercharger does bring to the party is lots and lots of power this bike is running a conservative 200 horsepower this bike could make a lot more power kawasaki actually have the when you're at 10,000 revs on this thing the throttle bodies are closing you know, this thing could make 250 horsepower quite easily, but Kawasaki cannot release a 250 horsepower motorcycle onto the public roads. So they're, they're, they're not that irresponsible. So they have muted this, they've neutered it. They've, they've tamed that power down to a very respectable 200 horsepower, but there's plenty more there if you were to get this chip to unleash it to its full potential. So that supercharger does bring some in inherent extra weight to the bike, but it does also make it a healthy amount of power. 135 newton meters of torque 
and 200 brake horsepower and that's just scraping the surface of the potential and the power levels this bike can produce. To ride it, it it's a comfortable bike and because Kawasaki know this isn't you know this is never going to be super fast in the twisties it's never going to be a naked you really want to take on track Kawasaki have sort of gone the other way with the whole feel of the bike they've made it quite upright you're not forward you're not oh you're not aggressively over the front end you're upright your legs are nice and spacious the pegs are quite low the bars are high it's a very comfortable place to be the only downside to the comfort levels is that engine is a wide engine the frame is wide your legs are splayed out quite a lot quite a splayed out leg so I guess you get used to that but after jumping on different bikes you notice that this is actually quite a wide bike so the bike isn't particularly sporty despite being 200 horsepower it's not been set up in a particularly sporty manner manner it's a comfortable machine the suspension is all fully adjustable but it's been set from the factory quite soft you know you can roll over those potholes it's all geared up really for high speed handling more than tight twisty stuff it does don't get me wrong you, you can hustle this around you can hustle it around you know it's show a big piston forks show a rear shock and it's set up quite nicely but it's road focused this is not a track naked this is set up to be a comfortable ride on the road i wouldn't even say particularly sporty ride on the road definitely more of a, a comfortable bike of course you could get your spanners out you could have a twiddle you could increase the preload you could stiffen it up much more I, i've left this as it comes quite soft the thing which most surprised me this bike living with it is the fact that it isn't a hooligan at all it's really a jekyll and hyde bike and i'm not talking about the looks again <laughs> i'm talking about the way it rides it's just it, it some bikes when you ride them they just want to make you ride like a bit of an idiot the tuono the super duke all of those super nakeds they want to make you ride like a bit of a a bit of a plum this one is perfectly happy just to poodle along the whole engine is so smooth one of the great things which is the, the same as the h2 is just the feel of the controls just how smooth the everything everything is and it doesn't give you that the power delivery again super smooth it's not instant you're not rah let's go it's it's very relaxed very smooth and that makes you really just quite happy to, to trundle along on this there's no sense that you've got to pin it everywhere but if you do pin it that is when it comes alive and it delivers a devastating amount of power and it's devastatingly fast but that was the biggest surprise for me just what a pussycat this is when, all, when i heard about all these 200 horsepower nakeds coming out i was like well how can you control that on the road they're going to be just crazy absolutely fine it's so well mannered this it's more it's, i think it's definitely the most well mannered super naked it is a pussycat well that is until you hit about eight grand and then it turns into mr hyde it is a lunatic another great thing about this bike everything is really included in the price it's got cruise control included in the 15 grand price quick shifter blipper included in the price you know you're not paying extras for these things you don't have to unlock these things they're all there included in the price the only thing which is slightly different there's a couple of different levels of the paint finish where you can pay a bit more for nicer metallic paint and stuff but the actual features and functions of the bike they're all the same whoa when you open it up that front wheel climbs in the air it's got the uh, ktrc the kawasaki traction control of course this bike's got a full imu you know you can't have a 200 horsepower bike without an imu this has got all of that it's got two power modes a full power and a low power you know you have it on full wouldn't you why have it on anything else and you've also got the different levels of the traction control i've got this on one wheelie control and traction control are all built into the same system so if you've got it on level one it will let you do a little bit more wheelieing if you up the traction control it will keep that more under control but level one for me feels nice it will come up give a bit of excitement 
and it is definitely exciting. When that power comes in, my God, it is exciting. Let's have a look. I'm going to pin it in first gear and let the traction and anti-wheelie sort itself out. That's how good these systems are. Okay, I didn't even pin it then. <laughs> that was about three-quarter throttle. And already it was uh, wheeling like an absolute banshee. When you get on that power, my God, does it go. Let's do that again from second. Power, power, it comes in, and then the wheel comes up. It shuts it down, and it comes up again. Ah! Oh, she's, <laughs> she's exciting. When she spools up, she's exciting. It may be Dr. Jekyll most of the time, but when that supercharger spools up, it transforms into Mr. Hyde. <laughs> It does handle, we'll take it to some twisties in a minute, but it, you can get it round, it wallows a little bit, you can feel the weight a little bit in the bends, it's fine, you know, it's okay, but you do have to wrestle it around a little bit. This bike is really about that straight line performance, this bike is about slaying <laughs> anything else on the road, but being in a very comfortable upright position while you're doing it. Let's wait for some traffic. So we get a clear run at the twisties. Oh, there's a police bike. That was handy. I'm glad I was going slowly. Must be doing that bike safe course thing. I'm glad I wasn't uh, <laughs> pinning it when they went past the other way. So here's some twisties. So let me try and convey what I mean about the handling. The pickup at the bottom end is you know, it's a bit slower than the bottom. That's what makes it such a smooth, gentle beast. It's not too aggressive at the bottom. The brake feel is nice, but when you change the direction quickly, you, you do have to give it some input to the bars and on very slow bends, it gets a bit wallowy, but I mean, it, it's, it's okay. I think probably it's just more a case of getting used to it, but you compare it to something like the Super Duke and it feels nowhere near as sharp nowhere near as sharp there's a lot more flex i think in the the actual chassis perhaps as well it's not a track weapon you can still enjoy yourself in the bends on the road but after you've slain those sports bikes on the straight you better be uh, expecting them to come past in the twisties <laughs> oh the cricket is in i'm gonna have to do a walk around in a minute was that green line? No, someone's house. Steering lock, it's actually not bad. It's not too bad. All right, what we do, we just pull over in the pub and we'll give a quick little walk around of her. So there she is, the Kawasaki ZH2. This is the, the matte black with the red frame. It, actually, in, in the red, I think it looks better than the... Uh, than the green version, if I'm honest. It, it does, <laughs> I've been a bit harsh, I'm sort of joking really. It, uh, it, it, looks, it, looks, it looks fine. The bike has a bespoke tubular trellis frame. This isn't just a copy of the frame from the ZH2, this is dedicated for this machine, just for the, the naked version. So, as I say, they haven't just taken the frame and you know, this is, the Z is all about being a naked bike. Here's the important stuff. Here's the supercharger bolted directly. And that will go around in a minute. You can see like the red inlet on there. This, this, is, this is why you've bought this bike, because of this supercharger. Now this is lifted straight off of the H2. The whole engine is the H2 engine. I mean, I have an H2, it looks like that. You know, this is it. If you look up here, you can see the, the, the aluminium throttle plenum. So as I say, this is all metal. This isn't like a plastic airbox. This is all, because it has to hold the boost pressure, it's all a metal plenum. So this is the sort of things which add weight to a supercharged bike. Brembo calipers, the M40 calipers, I think these are. The M4 calipers, they're not the top of the line ones, but they actually work very well indeed. Where I think they have gone slightly wrong with the styling of this bike is these little tiny headlights at the front and then a massive expanse of plastic here it's like a little sort of pod on the front of the bike it looks very high i'm not i'm not a fan of the front end oh it's you know it's all there for led lighting 
you know, it's got everything, LED indicators, full LED lights, but they just slightly missed the mark for me with the styling of, of, of that front end. But styling is subjective. So if you like that, you like it. Oh, shut up. This is the air inlet that goes into the supercharger. And the right hand side doesn't have one. So a lot of things people pick up on is it's, you know, it's, it's uneven. It's only got this inlet on, on the left, but all H2s are like that. The H2 was originally designed for one purpose and that was to get the air directly into the supercharger. I didn't care how it looked. It was the most important thing was the air was fed in huge quantities directly to the supercharger. And you can see that air feed goes right down and you can probably just see in there, that is the, uh, the inlet side of the supercharger, the red supercharger housing. And if you take this off, you can actually see the impeller of the supercharger, all billet, all made in-house by Kawasaki. They designed this whole supercharger system. This, they haven't bought this in from outside. This is 100% produced by Kawasaki Industries. That is pretty cool. Left-hand side of the engine, there's a lot of pipes, a lot of wires. It looks very complex all of that engine on here and I just think it looks a little bit untidy in a naked without the fairing. It's no surprise the bike is so quiet because the end can is really rather rather large on this bike and this bike has a it hasn't got a single sided swinging arm. That's one of the, the cost cutting exercises I think went on with this bike. It's got a conventional swinging arm, double sided swinging arm, as, as as the rest of the Z range. Let's have a little look ski under the seat. Under the seat you've actually got a little bit of room. It's another bike I can get my hand in. There's a, there's a, there's a little bit of room in there, not masses of room. You can get your sandwiches in there, flask of whiskey, you know that's enough to keep you going. Again, it's quite unusual these days to actually have a bike you can carry some stuff with you on. I like that. It has a key just like the uh, my H2, exactly the same key with the Kawasaki Industries on it. A nice quality key. So there we go, that's it. Let's jump back on. I think this bike really is, is as, as I say, it's for someone who wants to go exceptionally fast. They want something a bit different. You know, they want some supercharged action. Why, why wouldn't you? It's a fantastic thing to have a supercharger on a motorcycle. It's a novel, I mean, there's not many, it's only Kawasaki that were making production bikes with superchargers on. And I think it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I wish they'd bring it and put it onto some of their smaller capacity machines, like the ZX6R and stuff like that. Supercharged, it would make thousand power within the 600 chassis, amazing that would be. So I wish they'd do a little bit more with it, but this is definitely, a step in the right direction, bringing the supercharger onto a naked. Brilliant, genius, and I do see the attraction of this. And if this bike, for me, if this looked a little bit more pretty, a little bit more sexy, if they did, maybe if they brought out an R version with more tailored sporty suspension and a, you know, a, a few pounds lost off of it, I think it could very much be a contender. But for me, it's just a little bit lardy, a little tiny bit ugly. I guess it depends what you want. You may not want the, the ultimate sharpest handling naked. This is definitely more of a, a more comfortable touring place to be. Something comfortable, but goes like absolute stink. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it, it's a different bike to the Super Duo. I think it's a different bike to the Ducati Street Fighter. When people saw the headline figures, 200 horsepower, they were imagining you know, the rest of the bike was gonna be as performance orientated as, as the power figures, and it isn't. This is a much more comfortable ride. Perhaps a much more everyday bike to live, much easier bike to live with and to put miles on. So don't dismiss this bike just because it looks a little odd. But you get your head around the looks and it does grow on you. The looks do grow on you. It is a very, very nice motorcycle. Thanks for watching guys. Massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles as always for dropping this down to me. Those guys are amazing. Channel sponsors, dropping me bikes. I really appreciate it Wheels. Go and show them some love. I'll put their website below. Go and see what deals they've got. They've always got 
deals on. It's, it's worth having a look. They may be doing a deal on this. I don't know. Check them out. But thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next video. Take care. Ride safe. Bye-bye. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,